<laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are we all doing? Can't answer, I can't hear you. Yep, cool. Yeah. <laughs> doing well, yeah. Hello. Great. Hello, guys. Um, we'll just, the numbers are slowly kind of creeping up. So, as usual, we'll just kind of wait till they um, kind of get up to the number that they should be at and then we'll, we'll get going. So, um, hope you all had a good day. Um, got some of the sun as per usual. We're having Have a, a wee free drink. Free drink. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Ooh. Um, it was good. Mm. So, yeah, I think the, the numbers are kind of getting there quite quickly, which is great. Um, so, yeah, welcome along, guys, to Whiskey and Donuts. Um, I know there's quite a few sort of familiar people um, in the group, and there's also some new guys, which is great. Um, so I think we'll just kind of tell you a little bit about it first, just for the guys who are, are new here. So um, Whiskey and Donuts kind of came about last year yeah. when we were at a festival in Speyside called Spirit of Speyside, and we met a lovely couple called Johnny and Erica, um, who contacted you, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then so Johnny and Erica kind of obviously came up with the idea of whiskey and donuts actually being a thing, um, and yeah, they were coming over to Speyside, wanted to hold the tasting, and got in touch with us at Perk um, to to see if we'd work with them and, and come up with something. So yeah, it was loads of fun, and then from that we've well, we're good friends with them now, yeah, and, and we thought totally. during lockdown it might be a fun way for us to try and you work know, together. We should probably in. introduce ourselves. Oh yeah, sorry. I was just thinking, we didn't even say that. I know. We've done loads of these now, and we're thing. like, we still can't get, get this excited, bit quite right. But uh, my name is Matt, so I should have said. Um, I'm the owner here at the Malt Room, so that I'm the whiskey part. And and I'm the donut part, so I'm Nicole, and I own Perk as well, neighbouring to, yeah. to the Malt Room. So, yeah, we've teamed up during lockdown, um, kind of taken Johnny and Eric as idea. And it's been great, because a lot of you guys have really enjoyed it during lockdown when we couldn't quite get out. I know things are much kind of looser now um we're still closed at the moment um we're planning opening on the sort of first of august but i'll tell you a bit more about that near the end of the night but um let me just kind of explain to you kind of how it works so hopefully you guys got all your kits we didn't get an email saying you didn't so fingers crossed that's all gone to plan as usual and you've managed to resist until now um so if you lay out your mat in front of you we're looking at it left to right so um left to right you should have whiskey number one to five kind of going around and then the donut wise, um, you should have the kind of yellowy one with crumbs on it first. And this is, is the layman. yeah, this is like layman's terms. <laughs> For those who haven't done this before, Nicole explains the donuts as we go. So I don't want to spoil what they are. So he doesn't even know what they are. I don't even know what they are. It's just a good excuse for me to describe them as I see them. Um, so the yellow one with crumbs. Um, then we've got the white one with the little bits of raspberry on top. And then we have this one with, I know what, it, uh, nuts? That's cereal. Cereal, yeah. yeah, cereal on top. And then we've got the one with sugar. <laughs> I can't tell the difference between a nut and a cereal. <laughs> okay, I'm like, mm, this one? Uh, and then the last one is the orange one with the glaze on top. Um, so, yeah, so the idea with this is that I tell you a little bit about the whiskey. Nicole tells you donut, why we've paired it up. And basically just trying to have fun. Um, it's not supposed to be too serious. Um, don't feel like you have to eat the whole donut either. We like to mix and match mm -hmm. as we go along. You can try um, them out with different whiskeys. And yeah, yeah. The That's the best. That we like to make cocktails. I like to make a blend with the whiskeys. Um, so yeah, just just a lot of fun, really. Yeah. So. And ask us any questions. It's yeah. just us tonight. So if you write some in the comments, we can try and answer as much as we can. So yeah. If you have any questions yeah. about the whiskey or the donuts or. We'll try. And, we can see them kind of come up on the side on the yeah, right from yeah. Facebook. So. If you guys got any questions or anything you want to get involved, let's do it. So um, I think we'll have a sip of beer and then... Oh, this I wine think... is going down well. <laughs> Should we just leave this? This is what working yeah. in the yeah. week does do it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. We should also say, please get involved. This is the last one for a wee while as well. So um, sad to say it, but I think just with Nicole's kind of working flat out just now with Perk uh, reopening, um, and we are doing everything we can to try and get the bar in line with all the regulations that seem to be changing all the time. So we're trying to do our tasting room as well. So it's just, I think with you guys as well, like it's, you guys are kind of going out and about and exploring and mm -hmm. which is great. We're all getting, getting some sort of normality back. Yeah, so, yeah. but we were, we will do them on um, special occasions. Yeah, for the future, we'll, yeah. we'll kind of bring yeah. it up for, for something and, yeah. and we'll be in touch. For sure. So you guys can, yeah, enjoy this last one. We're going to definitely enjoy it. Yeah, um, let's go out with the <laughs> Yeah. Get involved, ask us questions. If there's been something you've got to ask us the whole time, just let us know and we can. Oh God, we can... that's a dangerous question. I know, I know. Maybe don't Stay do that with... one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
had too much beer. I know. You? I had a pint on the way in. I did. I did. I was walking down by the Glen Morriston. It looked so nice. I stopped oh, in. God. Um, so, yeah, less rambling, more about whiskey. Back to the tasting. Yes. Yeah. Okay, guys. So, whiskey number one, this one here. Um, we have an old favorite of ours, um, Glen Fiddich 12. So, um, yeah, just cracking, cracking whiskey. Um, William Grant's own Glen Fiddich. So, they're still a family owned um, distillery. Um, and yeah, it kind of gets overlooked sometimes, Glen Fiddick. Um, but I think with their new bottle design, actually, I don't think it will be now. I mean, it really stands out for me. Mm-hmm. Um, in Gaelic, it means Valley of the Deer. And with their new design, they've tried to put like a little V there, which kind of represents a valley with the kind of iconic deer in there as well. So, um, yeah, just just a really great, great distillery. Um, Brian Kinsman's their sort of master distiller. Um, he is a kind of god amongst whiskey fans. He's a proper scientist. He studied chemistry um and really takes whiskey quite seriously um in terms of the kind of a lot of people just like oh i like this and that but he really understands it to you know a really high level which i sat beside him at a dinner table once and was quite daunted by the conversation but actually we just talked about football which was a big relief for me um so yeah in terms of profile glenfiddich is really famous for that kind of apple and pears approach uh, approach flavor pints kicking in um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, have a smell. That is what you should get: apples and pears. Apples and pears. Well, to come. Cheers. To um to coincide with that, the donut for the first donut tonight, we've got an apple compote. Um, so this one's kind of like an apple crumble. You've got a little bit of biscuit crumb on the top, some vanilla icing, and then we've got the the apple crumb, uh, the apple compote on the inside. Um, so it should be like a little crumble. Mm. To compliment it, yeah. Mm. I feel like you're rubbing off of me. I know. I'm like str- stumbling. I know. I don't know what's happening. I think this is the last one. We're a bit <laughs> nervous. Excited as well. Excited nervous and nervous. I don't know. Um, yeah. Mm, it smells nice though. I like yeah, it. it's lovely. Um, I say it gets overlooked a little bit sometimes, but the most awarded single malt malt in in history is Glenfiddich, and um, yeah, as I say, Brian Kinsman's super, super, super impressive guy to to sit and listen to, and what he does is just phenomenal. Like he he's been behind the experimental series, which. A lot of you guys might have seen if you're a whiskey fan so um just kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit about what you can do in whiskey so they did that i think the first one was the ipa glenfiddich ipa so they put whiskey in cash that previously held ipa and then they did project 20 um so they had their 20 brand ambassadors and they all chose casks and they married them together and had this release which was which was great um the next one was winter storm which was phenomenal so this was like canadian ice wine casks which are super rare and like you know they're really like different shapes and sizes and the aged whiskey and that is really sweet as well that wine so the whiskey is i mean it's about 200 pounds a bottle for a 21 year old but um yeah worth trying if you can yeah. find a dram of it it's it's a really nice experience right i think it works well those of you who've joined us a few times will probably have already heard this chat of mine but sometimes the donuts is quite nice to to match them up so that they work really well and sync together and other times you want to try and contrast and try something a little bit out there and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and um, which is the beauty of it because we all have different palettes and mm. yes yeah, so i'd love to hear your feedback let us know what you think it's a good pairing yeah, um, yeah. i like that it's I'm, good I'm go again i didn't get much in the middle bit so i'm gonna go again Land in the mm. we'll soak up the beer you know that's it no. <laughs> oh yeah getting that i nice. like that dram though it's nice it's like fresh on palettes he's going mm-hmm. like so it. Ex bourbon um, from America, American oak, and America. America. And <laughs> I don't even know what's wrong. I don't know why you said that. <laughs> Just the way you came <laughs> over there. <laughs> um, and then Spanish sherry as well. Uh, so Spanish oak. So um, Brian marries those two together. Um, and that's what's I also super impressive about releases like Glenfiddich 12 is that if you buy one where you're from or where I'm from, they taste the same, you know. and to be able to blend at that level and that volume around the world and have that consistency year mm-hmm. after year is, you know, yeah. really, really impressive. Yeah. Um, right. He learned his stuff from David Stewart. He kind of shadowed him for a while, who's the guy who's responsible for creating the Balvenie Doublewood and has an MBE, actually. Mm. Um, so, yeah, very highly thought of. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to try some more of that whiskey for you. I'm liking that donut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. So what's in the middle pair of compote, is it? Apple. Apple. Apple oh. compote, yeah. Um, which is kind of, was actually probably one of the first ones we had on our, on our actual menu at Perk. Um, just something 
wholesome and, and tasty. And yeah. an apple crumble, I think, might be one of my favorite desserts in the entire world. So I thought, how, how can I turn that into a donut? <laughs> oh, you have. Yeah, mm. it's very good. Thank you. I might try a little bit more. What are we people thinking? Cracking mm. donut. Thanks, Scott. Mm. <laughs> uh, apples aren't too sweet, so it's lovely. Thanks, mm. Kirsty. God, I think I should probably get my glasses out. I'm struggling to see. I know. Maybe that's the wine. No. 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 It's my bad eyesight. No. <laughs> More. Nice. The donut won't last with the next round. So, <laughs> Tony, try save some because we need to make a mix. Hi, um, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to have you back in the bar, Tony. Yeah. Great. Catch up with you folks. Totally. Yeah. I'm excited for the bar reopening. It's going to be nice. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Um, it's kind of starting to look more like a bar and a less than a building site now, so yeah. I'm getting excited as the as the days go on. But we just decided to hold off for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. just to see how it all played out because we're so small that mm -hmm. I think doing it too soon would be a bit risky. Yeah. Hey, okay, right. Let's go to round number two. Yeah, number two. Okay. So yeah, I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. So. Ta -da. So, ram number, oh, I always get that the wrong way because it's mirrored. There we go. So, this is Yamazaki um, is it Founders Reserve. or Distillers Reserve? Distillers Reserve. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, Yamazaki, really, Japanese whiskey is one of those ones that split opinion in the bar. Um, a lot of Scottish people just mm. instantly write it off because yeah. they're just stubborn. It's got, um, it's yeah, it's not from Scotland, it's rubbish. Yeah. They've only just started copying us, which is just not true. Mm -hmm. um, Japanese whiskey has been going since the early early 1900s. Um, there's a guy called Matt. Here we go. Here this is, is the test. Test, okay. Makasaka? No. Makataka? I can't even Makataka. Because I'm not sure. Makataka Takasuru. Oh, okay. Thank you. There we go. If anyone knows if that's correct or not, that is correct. Let us know. Yep. Can, you know. Makataka Takasuru. There we go. Um, so he is, <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted with that. No, no, that is true. So he he's regarded as sort of the founder of Japanese whiskey. Um, and as we're talking about Brian Kingsman being a chemist and studying chemistry, um, he was a sort of Japanese businessman who also studied chemistry. And he actually came over to Scotland in 1918. Um, and he studied in Glasgow Uni, oh. believe it or not. Yeah. Um, and he learned his apprenticeship um, of whiskey making at Longmorn. And then he moved to Campbelltown. And it was Hazelburn where he started to learn how to make whiskey. He married a Scotswoman um, and moved to Japan. And he is the sort of founder of the Japanese whiskey industry. He kind of took okay. it over there. Um, so um, to say that they've copied it recently is just a load of nonsense. Um, that was, yeah, 19, 19, 1920, I think he moved back over. It was in November 1920, he moved back over to Japan. Um, he actually set up a distillery called Yoichi, um, which was sort of in the kind of... He chose Yoichi because he thought it was the closest um, to Scottish sort of landscape where he set it up and mm -hmm. um, so each is actually quite a peated japanese whiskey yeah that company is now called nika um yeah, but yeah so santori though i'm talking about him um is another guy who weirdly enough also worked in pharmaceuticals so he <laughs> yeah a guy called must um, a... yeah must be a thing it's yeah. so it's so weird um a guy called sinjiri tori um so he set up suntori um so he was basically had a, a pharmaceutical shop in a place called Osaka, um, and he started dabbling. Th their job was actually to dilute down Western spirits um, and resell them. And what he did is he ended up making his own his own port wine. It actually went really, really well. So he wanted to be the first to make a, a build a Japanese distillery, which he did in 1923, which is these guys. So that was Yamazaki. Um, and yeah, it was really unsuccessful to begin with. He tried to make whiskey that was similar to Scottish whiskey, and it was just too harsh for the Japanese palates. Mm -hmm. They hated it. Um, they wanted something that was more delicate, more fruity, softer. So then they changed, and they found this sort of release that worked for everyone, and they've kind of gone on from strength to strength there. Yamazaki's mm -hmm. now regarded as probably one of, if not the best, Japanese whiskey out there. Whiskey. Yeah, I would say Tichibu's yeah. kind of where it's at now, but Yamazaki... I mean, they're 18 year old, for example, now mm -hmm. sells mm -hmm. for 600 pounds a bottle for an 18 year old. They're 12 year olds, 120. Um, I think a lot of that to do is with Jim Murray. He, um, I don't really believe much Jim Murray says. He's a whiskey writer and 
He goes on nice Ooh. holidays. Yeah. I know, I know. It's like my jabs at my Sounds like you. Goes on nice holidays. Well, I know. Speaks about whiskey. I know. I mean, that's why I, I like teaching That's why you were like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What about me? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, he basically said that um, the 2013 Yamazaki Sherry Cask was the best whiskey in the world in 2015. So it was 120 pounds a bottle. I think it was 100 pounds a bottle. And you're now looking about three grand for a bottle of that. Wow. So, yeah, so he's, I mean, if Jim Murray names your whiskey, a lot of people do listen to him and he, of course he's got loads of knowledge, but I don't know, his reviews seem a little bit staged to me, but that's, that's by the by. Anyway, I'm rambling on about Japanese whiskey because I love it. Nice um, but yeah, in terms of flavor profile, really sweet, um, fruity. This is called a non-age statement whiskey. So as I said, there's a 12 and they're 18. This is called their distiller's reserve. There was a, with the popularity of Japanese whiskey, what happened was they started to run out of old stock. So they started um bringing non-age statements so there's no age on it but what it is is a mixture of, of casks between eight and 20 years old um there's bourbon sherry bordeaux wine and mizunara in there so mizunara is basically japanese oak mm -hmm. um, really, is this this really special tree special tree i was gonna ask grows, you to talk about this grows like this and yeah. it's really difficult to work with but the Japanese distillers. Uh, before, you, before you start on the sorry, tree, yeah, let me on, just quickly yeah. say the donut that you're eating. Sorry, yeah, it, thanks. No, yeah, we'll come I back need, to the cheese. I, I wanted I to, to cut it off. I did. I did. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> a mixed berry. So we have everything from blueberries, red currants, raspberries, strawberries, everything all in one. Um, as a jam on the inside, so super rich and berry on flavor. Um, and a wee glaze with some dehydrated fruits on the top as well, which will give them a bit of a sing too. Mm. Um, but yeah, talk about the tree. Sure. Mm. I actually was going to prompt you to say that. Mm, so I like this chap. Yeah, so Mizunara is uh, an oak that grows in Japan. Um, doesn't grow very tall and straight. Takes ages to grow. Difficult to work with. Um, but really puts in an interesting flavour into whiskey. People say like almost like a tea-like flavour, a herby sort of flavour. Um, and Mizunara casks are really rare and quite expensive. They were the Japanese during the war were kind of forced to use them because the imports and exports of oak from the states and Europe wasn't available so they had to deal with what they had um but yeah now they're in this there is whiskey that's been aged in mizunara um i don't know if you can taste it in that i i don't know how much they're using it but for me japanese whiskey that is i always that's a good starting place i think for anyone who comes into the bar and has never had it i'll always recommend this for the 12 just because it's so fruity and delicate and i just love it i think it's really good what do you it think it's like it's got so, like a it's like a different level of light. It's super, when you, the finish mm. on it really kind of just sits on top of your tongue. It's like a, it's not burning through your throat or through your chest. It's just got this really, mm. I don't know, it's just... It's approachable, I think. Yeah, totally. I love it. Mm, good donut. Thank you. Um, I, that, you I what's think... in the donut? I was thinking about the tree when you were describing oh, it. sorry. Tell me again. <laughs> I'm thinking about the tree. I was. Um, <laughs> no, I... So, mixed berries. So, raspberries, strawberries, nice. red currants, cozy berries, yeah. blackberries, everything. So that um, kind of fits in with this, great. Yeah, so lo loads of different berries, but yeah, and I'm I'm a big fan of Japanese whiskey actually. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, like obviously being here and trying loads of different stuff as well. But it's interesting. It's good, mm -hmm. you know. We had that night with that crazy Japanese oh, whiskey. Oh wow, yeah, that was insane. We were like two kids that just won the Charlie Jug about the golden ticket. I know, I know. So there's <laughs> a, a very rare whiskey. Um, speaking of Chichibu, um, the guy who owns and runs Chichibu called the Chiro. Um, his grandfather, um, oh no, he had Hanyu. He had Hanyu, didn't include it. So Kurizawa was basically, um, still I think it closed down in 2000, I think. Um, and basically all the casks basically got bought up. And there's not that many of them left. So it's, it's basically the rarest and most sought after Japanese whiskey you can buy. Um, the latest release was 15,000 a bottle. Um, yeah. I, not exactly in the in the budget. Uh, <laughs> no, so very very expensive and rarely open, and you know it's it's just super collectible that you you don't really see them open. But it was a Monday night and it was pouring rain, and guys from Tomatin came in, and it was this guy from Shanghai, and it turns out he was the biggest buyer and seller of Kurizawa um, there, and he said, "Oh, do you mind if I bring out some whiskey in your bar?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, no problem." He had like a jacket on; it wasn't like suited and booted. Normally, or you say no to this kind of thing. You're like, "Normally, like, I would get fine." <laughs> totally, <laughs> like you're not bringing out your bottle of grouse get out, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> like, so no, he brought this out, and he's like, "Oh, do you want a dram of Kurosawa?" And we we're like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah." And he poured his one, and 
like it, it does live up to the hype. Um, if you do want to treat yourself and you're in a bar or if you're traveling and you see one, mm -hmm. you will pay a lot for it. But to take it off the list, if you're a whiskey geek like I am, um, yeah, it's great. Um, yeah. It's amazing. I, yeah, I can't say anything bad about it. Yeah. I wanted to hate it. I really did because a lot of these expensive whiskeys, I've tried a lot of expensive whiskeys, just been fortunate and being in the right place at the right time. But a lot of them are quite woody because mm -hmm. they're, been in cask for so long mm -hmm. and 90 percent of them won't get opened and drunk but um yeah this was great mm -hmm. we actually it kept the so glass fine in the bar um smelled it a few hours later and it's had a better amazing. nose than a lot of full glasses did mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. just phenomenal um so unfortunately we're not drinking that yeah. but um, <laughs> um but yes hope you you guys have enjoyed yamazaki um i'm almost finished this time actually mm, I, I think it's about i think it retails about 50 to 60 50 ish mm. pounds a bottle um well it's expensive yeah. for a non age statement yeah, yeah. Well, but actually, yeah, yeah you course. know it's probably the most expensive 12 year old in the market it's 120 ish pounds for a 12 year old considering this is non-age all oh, right okay so yeah okay. so the next one up from that's the 12 considering mm. that you know you can buy that for an offer maybe 25 30 pounds right yeah of course. You know, you're four times that for, mm -hmm. for this so um it is a decision to make you know you're mm -hmm. paying four times the four times the money but um yeah worth worth trying and hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and maybe change your opinion on japanese whiskey because for me they're the best nation after ourselves of course we've got amazing so far you're gonna have to read that with your glasses tasting from essex england great pairing oh, great cheers, lots of a lot of money for alcohol yes it is mark sweeney 55 pounds on amazon oh. there you go yeah so um if you do like that i would encourage you as well to try the 12 um it is a jump up but um yeah again it's a special one, it is okay. yeah it is if, you, if you're going down the japanese whiskey route mm -hmm. looking to spend it's all relative isn't it like whiskey's a crazy yeah. world i like, think you know what as well like you know we always talk about the rights and wrongs in the whiskey world and you know and really i think whiskey like everything else you should just break the barriers of anything that says you shouldn't do this or you can't do this you know mm -hmm. and that's like compass box blending four of the greatest whiskeys in the world yeah. into you know or Loads of different stuff. So it's like, you know, Japanese whiskey being as amazing as it is, you know. Totally. Sh there shouldn't be any rules. It should be like, yeah, whiskey's an age thing, but let's like experiment and have fun totally. with it. And, totally. Yeah. Like and that's, that. that's what we're doing here. Like, that's why we never yeah. tell you the list before you buy tickets or, yeah. or anything like that. We like to surprise you and, you know, because a lot of people, if you see a lineup, you think, oh, that looks amazing or that doesn't look amazing. But mm -hmm. until you actually have them in glass in front of you, like mm -hmm. a lot of it's just preconceptions um and yeah and lots of people say like donuts and whiskey that's crazy yeah and now we have customers come in and say i won't drink whiskey without donuts anymore yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. like so it's yeah we're it's... helping scotland's nhs <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay um so we're going to drama number three guys um so when we were talking earlier about whiskey and donuts and johnny and erica um they've actually joined us so Yay. um i can see johnny down there in the week i don't know mm -hmm. if eric is there but i can I'm going to add them in and we can have a chat about the third dram. I think they've got the same one in front of them. This is fun. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Uh, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> well, Thanks for uh, letting me join. Go. How are you doing? Good. Good. Uh, oh, good thank you so far. much. Yeah, yeah, it's been good actually. I've really, that Yamazaki and kind of, the jam donut for me is just like, I just am a sucker for jam anyway. Yeah, and donut, so, so. Um, yeah, so no, so yeah, how are you? Good, really good. Happy Friday. Oh, we've lost right, Friday, Friday, oh, Friday no, evening no. for you. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, what time is it with you? Uh, it is a little afternoon, so 12 30. Yeah, let's see. Nice, nice. So, um, what. Maybe just a yeah. reconnection problem. But we'll um better. we'll talk you we'll talk through kind of the, I'll give you a wee chat on dram number three and then I think you got some donuts. You got, so hey, cool, yeah. There we go. So what's oh you've got a slightly different one to me. Have you got the cast strength one? Or what's that uh, one? No, this is this is the old label. So I think this one the the uh, the date the is uh, early nineties. So. Yeah, oh nice. wow okay so that one's pulling out the fancy spring banks <laughs> he's trying to show us up here oh, <laughs> <wow. laughs> um so 
Um, bring back for those who have maybe never seen or heard it before, you know, really old school kind of labeling. Um, they're based uh, in a region kind of in the southwest tip of Scotland called Campbelltown. Um, so Campbelltown's got a really interesting whisk history. Um, real boom and bust kind of area in terms of whiskey. So at one point, um, they had about 30 distilleries. Um, there was some reports saying that per capita, they were the richest place in the UK. Um, it was just whiskey smuggling galore. Um, and yeah, it was just really, really booming. Um, nice, nice seal broken on the old spring bank. Uh, like, that's exciting. Um, so yeah, um, as a distillery, they're properly old school. Um, so they do everything themselves on site. So they malt their own barley, they bottle on site. Um, they just do absolutely everything. And whiskey fans love that because just due to the scale of whiskey production now, a lot of distilleries get the maltings done elsewhere. Bottling is done at bottling plants, um, but not these guys. They do absolutely everything. But unfortunately, um, the demand for the whiskey in Campbelltown led to guys cutting corners. Um, the blenders turned their back on them because the quality dropped. And now there's only three. So there's Springbank, Glen Gale, and Glen Scotia that are left. But these guys have really kind of firmed their place as as the distillery they, and they produce this they do long roll which is peated um hazelburn unpeated and this is kind of the middle child so we're kind of a little bit of peat here so um what donut have you got johnny to go with spring bank well we tried to match up based upon what nicole uh made up so we have the fruity pebbles with the vanilla milk uh glaze and it's on a kind of a light brioche traditional donut it's actually a pretty big size too. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, you can take a screenshot of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So for folks who don't know, we've um, we've got the, the the donut for this uh, for this whiskey is like a, a milk sort of soaked cereal, um, like a crunchy nut peanut cereal milk glaze. And um, so there's nothing on the inside, um, but it should be quite flavorful, quite sweet, nutty um, on the top. I'm and a bit nervous about this. You're nervous. I know. Well, he looked at it and thought a bit of cereal was a peanut. So mm, let's just, you know, yeah. don't take it. Is there nuts in it? No, no, there's nothing inside. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, can't take him anyway. All right. I'm going to go in for mine as well. Mm. Slight variation. Where's Erica, Johnny? No, you, she's unfortunately, she's at a, she's at the office on a conference call, but uh, oh. she wished she could be here. So she might be watching remotely. Is her, so what you're saying is her work is more important than this. Thank you for saying that, and I hope she's listening yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> Lack of commitment to whiskey and donuts. We need to have one. <laughs> so usually with a spring bank on this 10, I would usually go for something fruity, so I thought it was really interesting um, that you went with this, but I think on mm. the cereal note, it's kind mm. of uh, brings out a little bit more of the, uh, the maltedness. Mm. Yeah, I think that was the kind of the hope for that, and that it was you know it was kind of milky and creamy and and mm. light and and kind of not overpower it and, and really mm -hmm. sort of pay attention to the, the whiskey. That, that was whiskey what I was going for. Great, Do you know, it's mm. just like malty, rich, wow. and then there's that gentle smoke. Like you do get it. Like, um, yeah, yeah, you get the smoke in that big time. Mm -hmm. What percentage is this? 43, I believe. Okay. Um, Feels oh, bigger than oh. that. No? 46. Sorry, 46. 46. Oh, no, I, I should know that. All spring banks are bottled at 46. You know, going from yeah. going from the Yamazaki to that, yeah. like, mouthfeel is big. Big, yeah. Fashion. So, yeah. I mean, spring bank don't muck about. They do everything whiskey geeks like. Like, their fermentation times are over 100 hours. They've got, like, open fire stills. Um, like we've got worm tubs, um, so all these sort of things that kind of excite whiskey fans, mm. they, they do. So, um, yeah, I, I love Spring Bank. Um, I wasn't sure that to begin with my whiskey journey, if you want to call it that. Um, it was a wee bit, taste like the 15 is what I used to try, and mm -hmm. I don't taste it like an old damp shed. Like, honestly. <laughs> How many times have you tasted an old damp shed? But no, when you shed? walk into like a, a damp shed or something, yeah, like, you get it that. smells juicy. Like and I was like, why are people drinking that? That that is awful. Um, but now I'm kind of like, like that muskiness you know, of a whiskey. Like I actually really like. Um, I can see what why this is so popular. And in fact, this is really hard to come by out here. Um, mm. At least yeah. California West Coast. Um, 
just a regular spring bank 10 is really hard to find. I can not only is the price uh, a little uh, inflated, but um, it's just you cannot find it. So yeah, it's it's because of cheers to that. Yeah, cheers, enjoy <laughs> it. Cheers, yeah. it's lunch. Love to see. It's lunch. Oh, that's a good sound. I know that was, oh, that was a good one. Oh, here we go. Which we could choose you. Yeah. Ah, oh, the malt room glass. <laughs> nice, nice. Have to. Oh, I was just going to say. I suppose for those who don't know, we were actually supposed to have a whiskey and donuts tasting this summer. Um, and do yes. a few over here for the, for the whiskey festival. So hopefully we can roll that over to next year. Then and and let it. Oh, and do you know what, Johnny? You we just got the perfect intro here. So <laughs> Mark, we, Mark, Mark, Mark Sweeney. Yeah, Mark. It's almost like we've, you know, we haven't paid Mark, but thanks for that Mark, transition, you, Mark. <laughs> you are on the right lines here, my friend. Um, so um, we've got a little competition. Uh, Mark Sweeney says, where did you get the T-shirt? So um, Johnny and Erica very kindly. Um, can we see your T-shirts? Let's have a look. Yes. Very kindly okay, so the, the, it's a brand new one. Um, this is the men's style that's going to be out um, by this weekend. It's Peace, Love, Whiskey Donuts. So, Love it. Um, let's see. Here's the uh, the uh, women's version. We've got the black. We'll, we'll offer more options in the future. Nice, nice. Um, we've got the traditional one, I think, that maybe you have or is the most popular, 101. Nice. Nice. California. And then we've got a couple newbies here, um, a little bit more of a barrel design. So small nice. batch apparel yeah. collective, you know, um, different cool. colors and the 101. So we're going to give away cool. some of yeah, these. Yeah, great. Love it. Oh, oh. So... Um, We've just kind of put basically the people who have bought tickets. I know there's multiple people in households as well, but we've just put some numbers down. So what are we up to number? We're up to number 23. Up to 20. So a number between, well, do you want to pick a t-shirt first, Johnny? Or what, how are you going to work well, it? To, to let's, uh, depending on if it's a uh, boy or girl, we, gotta, we, we girl. can uh, okay. decide on that. Cool. Yeah. So do you want to give us a number between 1 and 23? 22. Ooh, Ooh, Lewis Reed. Lewis Reed. <laughs> Congratulations, Lewis well Reed. Done. <laughs> you got yourself a t-shirt. How about this one? Yeah. The Art of Pairing. Great. Nice. So what to do, guys, um, that email I sent out just with instructions on how to see the stream and stuff, if you want to reply to that email address, uh, just with what size you'd like, I guess, and then we can we can arrange that at our end and we'll, we'll get it sent to you. Amazing. So Fraser yeah. Fraser Morrison um, whiskeyanddonuts.com the uh, Scottish spelling of whiskey American spelling of donuts.com yeah. <laughs> no, no one's perfect yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bridge the gap here yeah <laughs> awesome well thank you very much Johnny that was very kind of you to put that up so how's your combo what how's it going down actually I think uh, Nicole's on to something I prefer this style. I mean, I don't know what yours is exactly, but I like the idea of it just being creamy and kind of that milky vanilla hmm. because it kind of actually, instead of muddling the uh, the spice, the, you know, the subtlety on that um, with the, uh, the the 10 year old, it's actually complimenting very well. So mm -hmm. you might be onto something. Oh, dude, I think if I if I would change up a little bit, I'd maybe do like a little bit of a, of a cream on the inside, like whip it into a cream and fill it. Um, yeah. with a little bit more flavor to that, but no, I like it. The whiskey's good though, it stands for itself, you know. Yeah. Whiskey spring mm. bank is solid. Mm -hmm. You could put whatever cereal of your choice and blend that within the cream inside too, so there's a little texture. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm. Yeah, oh, good. Nice. Next year, <laughs> next year, we'll do something. Yeah, I'm Let's excited. <laughs> great. Well, thanks very much, Johnny. That was great. Um, and we will get that T-shirt to Lewis Reed as well. So I have another question. Oh, there's another question. What have we got? Where in California is your shop? We are strictly online um, right now, but um, I'll just say this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We are online what, right what now. Is, what does uh, that mean? I'm confused. <laughs> oh, it's just another emoji. It's the continuation of this. Ah, I see. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no further details. It's, yeah. Classified, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I> tell you. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Nice. Good, good. 
So we do. Are we doing more shirts, or is it just the one? It's up to you. It's up Let's to do you. Let's a couple more. Shirts. Come on. Yeah, yeah. New new shirts. Shirts. No, no, cool. they're our shirts. Our shirts. Ah, okay. cool. Let's Amazing. do a couple more. Cool. Right, we're gonna have to give us another number between one and twenty-three. Um, my number thirteen. Ah, my best friend's number two. Uh, so, uh, Carly Hutchinson. Carly Hutchinson. Congratulations. Carly Hutchinson. Yay. Charlie. Charlie or Carly? Carly. 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 Are you saying her last name? Is that not right? Hutchinson. Is that who's it? Hutchinson. How'd you say it? <laughs> Hutchinson. I'm sorry. Hey, you both are hammered. I'm my own writing. Uh, Carly. Carly well done. Cut off. <laughs> Hutchinson. Hutchinson. How about, how about the, uh, the brand new one here? Oh, oh that's cool. amazing. Great. Nice. Congratulations, Congratulations. Carly. No last name. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it put in the back of the shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, brother. Okay. Nice. So one more number. One, one more? more. Yeah, one more. Uh, let's go um, eight. Eight. Good number. Okay. Uh, Tom Ashmole. Nice. Well done, Tom. Tom. Congratulations. These guys came in. Congratulations. Today. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hey, about that one? Oh, there you go. Thanks. Congratulations, Tom. Amazing. Awesome. Well, well, thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Make sure everyone gets back to them. So, I mean, we can uh, change it up. Everyone saw what t shirt variations yeah. there are. So, oh, you know, I saw Mark Sweeney said it's for, yeah. but it's for her boyfriend. So, you guys can deal with that afterwards. <laughs> And maybe you could actually put a link in the um, in the comments just for people to go ahead to your shop and stuff, just so they can they can grab yes. it from there. Yeah, sounds good. Um, awesome. I'll do that. So when are we seeing you next year? That's the most important question. I think that's the key. It's next year. We were talking about um, end of this year, but I don't think that's uh, that's happening. So yeah, it um, doesn't look like it's going to happen, eh? Yeah, so I'd say earliest March, April. Great, cool. So. Well, I look forward to it. Look forward yeah, to me too. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, we'll run. We'll run the town. Best wishes. Yep. Thank Slajava. you. Slajava. Cheers. <laughs> thanks for having me on and congrats yep. to all the winners and enjoying this pairing. Well, we'll thanks for the idea. It came from you, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Stick, stick around you. and watch the, the other two. I'm excited to see what's, what's uh, next here. Perfect. Great, great. Perfect. Next one. Cheers, Johnny. Thanks, all right. Joe. See you later. Oh, he's gonna, am I going to? He gonna... He's going to. Is he going to? I'll leave. I'll leave the studio so you don't oh. have to get up. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We've done this before. But, but, but yeah. a cool transition yeah. like this, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, yeah, well done, guys. Thanks again to Johnny for coming on. That was cool. And it's a nice bottle of spring. Like. I got the first two. Who was the, the, the last? 22, Louis Reed. So, oh. I got you. I was going to watch it back and do it slyly because mm. I couldn't remember. But thanks. Okay. That saves me doing I'm that. I'm the brains of this operation. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> so, uh, whiskey number four, guys. Um, we are staying with a little bit of smoke. Okay. Um, so, Jura 10. Um, so, yeah, one a whiskey that, again, I haven't had in ages, Jura. So, Jura is a little island um, about 60 miles off the coast of Scotland, southwest, again. So, it falls into the, the island kind of category, which is normally traditionally known for a little bit of smoke. But nothing too crazy like Isla, nothing too too PT. So um, there's a really cool little story actually um, about Jura. So George Orwell um, wrote um, the book 1984 uh, in Jura. Um, so he actually describes the, the distillery as being an ungettable island. So ungettable, ungettable, yeah, which. Just means it's you know sixty miles from the coast. So why right. would you decide to make whiskey there? It seems so stupid. Um, <laughs> but you know it's a beautiful part of the world, um, and nowadays obviously a bit more easy. But they make about two point two million liters of alcohol there, which um, the big guys, Glenfiddich and Levitz, make about you know fifteen million. So it's pretty pretty big production, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of small distilleries make about half a million to a million. So um, yeah, really, really yeah, totally. Um, Jura's not one I've dived into that much either, to be honest with you. Nah, I kind of neglected yeah, it. Yeah, me but, too. Yeah. Because for me, it's like if I want smoke, I'll go Isla. Yeah. If I don't want smoke, I'll stay Highland or Speyside. So I, I'm kind of with you on that. I, I kind of forget about it a little yeah. bit. Um, so yeah, excited to try it again. It's been mm -hmm. a long time. Um, but yeah, they actually released a, a, a bottle um, in, in the George Orwell uh, book, um, or for the book. I think they're about £500 now. So. Wow. 
pretty good, but it's a thirsty year old whiskey. So on today's market, that's actually not too bad. Yeah. And it was peak in 1984. You can mm -hmm. tell I'm not like a like English lit or anything. Like I'm like, oh, George Orwell, tell me about him. I'm like, I was Googling him today and like, he just comes up in pub quizzes all the time. So oh, who God. wrote this book? I'm like, I just write George Orwell. Every um, time. Every time. Oh, it must have been George yeah, Orwell. My knowledge is definitely not like like classic books and literature and everything. But I thought I looked into it and I thought people out there will know more about him than I do. So mm. feel free to tell me any George Orwell facts in the comments and that'd be great. <laughs> but yeah, so no. Jura, um, in terms of flavour profile, mm. um, a little bit smoky. Um, oily, waxy kind of comes to mind as well. Um, but yeah, how about how we know you? Nice, think? and yeah, actually, and oh my goodness, I just flicked that in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the donut to pair with us tonight, um, is uh, um, lemon and orange marmalade. Um, so, um, yeah, it's just kind of super homemade, and we've done a, a um, lemon sugar on the outside so um one of the, one of the annoying things about donuts is it sucks in the sugar after a while so it might not be super sugary but you should still get the lemon on the outside of that so nice. that should bring up the citrus notes and the kind of light note from there nice be good okay here we go um, I, I, mm -hmm. it smells very distinctive you know mm -hmm. yeah it's got a really earthy smell to it i think hmm. yeah earthy yeah it's not smoky, it's like, I think, I think the earthy is a good word, actually. Yeah, earthy is a perfect word for that. Yeah, let us know what you're getting from it. If, you, if you're getting any specific, anything specific on the nose or the palate, that'd be great. To know. It's a really interesting flavour, kind of profile they've got. Um, right, donut time. I like it, but I don't think it's my favourite, actually. A lot of people say that. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of love for Jura really out there. Rarely get people come in raving about Jura and wanting mm. to try Jura. Um, but I think it's nice. Mm. I do like it, but I think it, it's a halfway house, I think, almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I don't know if the earthiness is working for it or against it, but you mm. get that. It's got a nice nose. I like it. I mm -hmm. like it. Kind of, it's, a total, it's completely different from everything else that we've tried. Yeah. It's definitely stepping up in the sort of smoky kind of spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a really interesting spirit. Like, their stills are really funky as well, actually. I've never seen stills like them. They, a traditional sort of still goes like this and then up and then out um their stills kind of go like this and then as soon as they go up they pinch in like this and then they've got like a it's imagine like like a belt around the still and you pull it really tight so it kind of goes like this up and then squeeze in and then goes out like this i like that when they have the extra bump mm, but normally it goes out the way yeah this one goes in the way. way yeah like yeah. it's in um and it's to increase copper reflux um and they're really tall as well which would give you normally a really light spirit um the second tallest in the uk actually the or scotland sorry um the only ones that are higher are um, glenmorangie which i think in one of our tastings were the size of a giraffe oh yeah um where if everyone knows i don't know you most people in here glenmorangie mm -hmm. yeah um their stills are the same height as a, a fully grown giraffe and I think they're about 23 feet, the Jura ones. So I don't know what Glen Morangie's ones are, but they're higher or taller than that. But wow. yeah, tall stills with a pinch in them. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, right? After I've got a mouthful of the marmalade on the inside, mm -hmm. the oranginess, yeah. take another drink of that. That works really well together. Let's go for it. So if you have a bit of that and then drink the whiskey, honestly, that that kind of like, you know, so like, do the right a, a bit of the donut mm -hmm. and then try the whiskey. And then try the whiskey. Right. And then... You know, well, I was doing that all wrong. Well, you do most things, you know, <laughs> so I'll keep you right, you know. <laughs> no, actually, I'm actually that's really surprising. That kind of the orange rind that we we grate through the, the marmalade, I think it's quite nice. It picks it up a little bit. Don't Let know. me know. Yeah, no, he's I knew by his face no. he's gonna disagree with me. No, Let not me know for me, that agree. one. 
Agreed. Um, there we go. Yeah. Ian. Thank you so much, Ian. Agreed. No. <laughs> I just, I don't know if it's a psychological thing or... No, I think that really changed it, actually, for me. I'm, I'm by mm. myself. It's good. I think, yeah, it, they're probably improved. I just don't, I don't know. Yeah, not loving Jura. Hmm. Um, well, Jura, you're watching. I know. I, nothing against the whiskey. It's I'll just make not some for me. marmalade. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing about whiskey. We're not, the biggest thing with whiskey and donuts, we don't sit here and say every single one is amazing yeah. and stuff. Like, that's not what it's about. It's, it's a bit of fun. And if you like it, great. If you don't, that's fine too. And that, that one is just not for me. Um, but hey, shall we move on to. The last one, which I yeah. think will be for me. What's your favourite so far? Uh, favourite donut is definitely the jam one. Yeah. Favourite whiskey is probably Spring Bank. Mm. Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for me, I think it's actually the pairing number two is probably my favourite. Yeah, I'm yeah, pairing two, that. I think, for me is great. Yeah, my back is great. Yeah, and it's so unusual as well. It's almost, mm. you know, mm -hmm. that, yeah, I agree with you. Pairing two is yeah. phenomenal, think, actually. Yeah, think, yeah. yeah. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't make the whiskey. <laughs> Although maybe a trip to Japan. You've already had one. I know. It's actually everyone else's turn. Another one. <laughs> because you know, Jim Murray wanted to invite me along after my kind words. That'd be that'd be nice. Sounds like you'd be banned from Jura though, so I'll uh... <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Jura McCallum. Can you take me? From... I'll bring you some more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so whiskey number five. Uh we are there's only one way to go after having Spring Mank and Jura. There's there's no going back now. So we are into Isla. Um and we are having Beaumore. So um Beaumore, um first distillery on Isla to have a license, so 1779. Hmm. Um they argue uh, along with a few other distilleries that they are the oldest distillery. Um the guy who um, started Beaumore actually moved to Isla about 30 years before officially was licensed so you know we know there was whiskey being yeah, made before yeah. then but 1779 was when when it was first um first officially had a license and we we're making whiskey so um whiskey on isla is just probably the without doubt my favorite whiskey super smoky um that flavor comes from peat so um I'm excited. yeah a lot of people ask like where does the smoke come from is it you know you see people flaming like barrels and casks but it's all part of the process where um, you soak the barley to kind of trick it into growing, which is called germentation, and then you need to dry that barley. Um, so depending on how you dry that barley makes a huge difference into the flavor of your whiskey. So um, if you dry it with, say, just coal or something that's, you know, a, a smokeless kind of fuel and just dry the, the barley out, that's fine. That's how you kind of get your kind of space side glenfiddich and stuff. There's no, there's nothing kind of too complicated about that. Um, however, on Isla, they've got peat. So peat, for those who don't know, is condensed earth over about three to four thousand years and it's basically sea life and vegetation it's just being compressed and compressed and compressed um, and it's so compressed that you can actually use it as a fuel source so if you burn that it lets off a really distinctive smell so um, basically the peat is here burning barley on top and it dries it out so the best way to think about it and the best sort of description I say to people is that imagine you've been at like a bonfire or a barbecue and then you smell your clothes the next day mm -hmm. They still smell of smoke and you can still smell that barbecue so that's what happens when you burn peat and dry barley with it that all the sort of fennels stick to the barley and that carries right through the process mm -hmm. um this this flavor is not for everyone um it's i used to hate it but now i've grown to to love it um mm -hmm. and yeah I've always loved this. yeah put your nose in the glass and and see what you think oh. yeah bomore is yeah bomore is class um it's they released a bottle in 19 oh, their 1993 called Bowmore Black. Um, that's a great year, by the way. 93, yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were older. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, 1993, they released one called Bowmore Black, and I think it was it was in odd bins for those who remember odd oh. bins um and it was like a single cask and it was 80 pounds a bottle which at the time was a lot of money and it was quite a premium price tag for a whiskey and it was called Bowmore black because it was in sherry casks and it was literally black in color um and yeah nowadays it is sought after as probably the most collectible or one of the most collectible bottles of whiskey so the, there's four of them four series of them now but 
Um, the original eighty pound bottle goes for eight grand. Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen grand. Ooh. And I met a guy in the bar here one night who has a what? case. Yeah, he used has to work. He used to work in Oddbins and oh, he has a case. Holy shamoly. Yeah. Retirement fund. Yeah, sorted. that's exactly what it was from. He had a retirement fund. Um, holy shamoly. Yeah, 480 quid and it's now 90k. Wow. Yeah. So that was in 2007. It really started to kick off when like auction sites became yeah. the thing um, and foreign investment came in. Um, the Asian market loved Bullmore. Um, it's actually owned, funnily enough. That's brought me on nicely to that. I didn't mm. even mean that. Um, these guys. Yamazaki, Suntory own these guys. Oh, yeah, so I didn't know that. Beam Suntory own um but more. They also own the Freud as well. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah. So okay. yeah, yeah, Japanese, they're no joke when it comes to whiskey. So anyway, sorry. And the donut, rambling. no, don't worry. The donut with them um, with this one as well is one that we've had do kind of a few tastings that we've done. Um, but as it's kind of the last one for a while we thought we need to bring it back it's just one of our kind of all-time favorites which is the old-fashioned so there's nothing in the middle but it's a, a sort of a, an old-fashioned in it so if you don't know what old-fashioned is you've got like angostura bitters you've got whiskey you've got orange and um, ice and sugar yeah and then yeah. you mix all together and it's kind of this sweet citrusy yeah. you know angostura's i don't know bit like bitter yeah, yeah. Bitter and herby and it it's just like a pro it's my favorite cocktail yeah like, like, yeah I love and it. with whiskey yeah. it just works like it's just such an amazing like yeah. combination and for a finisher for this tasting I'm I thought, you know this is might be my this favorite, is definitely your favorite yeah, yeah without doubt yeah yeah for sure chin chin mm. Mm. it's the angostura it's just so good yeah it's great in the icing you just taste it straight mm. away <laughs> yeah hmm so we have an orange, fresh orange, zest and juiced icing with a little bit of cherry and um, some, is that quite a green cherry in it? I don't know if that's just a me thing, but. An old fashioned or yeah. in here? Well, both actually, mm. but a little bit cherry in this and um, in the glade. And then the, the, the kind of drizzle over the top is a really, really concentrated Angostura um, mm. drizzle. So um, yeah, it's good. Winner okay. in my book. Yeah, yeah. always. Yeah always mm. just love that but another cool thing at Bulmore is they've got this thing called the I don't know I some, yeah home of the number one vaults the world's yeah. oldest scotch maturation warehouse um so where Bulmore is based on Isla it's kind of like in a really sheltered sort of harbor so it's kind of if you look at if you look at Isla on a map it's kind of like in the middle on the coast on the on the west but not totally out so it's in this really sheltered kind of little little harbor um, and during the war, the the RAF actually used it as a base, um, and they used their 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 vault or their warehouses to, to store ammunition. Um, so yeah, it's the oldest oldest warehouse. So mm. they say that they they aged their best whiskies in number one the vault. Yeah. Um, which is cool, and that is true. Um, and that's where that whole thing of like maturing whiskey by the sea comes into. It. You get that salty, briny kind of yeah. thing because the sea air keeps hitting the casks and they're living, breathing things. Well, pop um, for that, isn't it? The salt the sea. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's a little bit of marketing there, but you know, part yeah. of it's true too. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um yeah. Like, I like it. You can't you can get the saltiness from that, Dan. Mm -hmm. I think you totally can. Yeah, yeah. It's I think that's a nice introduction to Isla whiskey without giving someone Lafroy or Lagavulin, yeah. which yeah. can be quite a lot. Um that's I think a nice a nice bridge into Isla. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, Bullmore for me is is very good. I get, do you know, I haven't tried a, a whole load of Bullmore, but, mm. and, and it's weird because I'm very into Isla whiskey, but no, I like that. It's good. Mm -hmm. and like you say, it's quite an easy stepping stone for the yeah. kind of trying these sort of trams. I think we've actually, we've, we've gone quite smoky tonight, actually. We yeah, normally, we normally, yeah, yeah, we normally go for maybe one smoky one at the end, but the Springbank has got some elements of peat in there, mm. Jura does, and the Bullmore, but Hopefully what you guys are finding, maybe if you don't like smoky whiskey, I didn't used to like it and the thought of that would scare me at a tasting, having three smoky drams. But I think in this sort of scenario where you just try them for what they are, that hopefully your palate will adjust and you'll enjoy them. Yeah. I, it's definitely, I love smoky whiskey now and I'm, I don't know what I do. Well, I, don't, that's I, don't I mean, I was the opposite when I when I started working here. I was I, I couldn't see past Isla whiskey. Anything that wasn't peaty or smoky, I thought it doesn't hold its own. It has mm -hmm. no 
voice, like I can't feel it, I can't taste it, you know. And then, you know, once I was I was proved wrong essentially, I think it was an Altmore nineteen year old Bioca casket mm. turned me around. That was the that yeah. was the turning point for me. I was like, I This tastes like that. jam. Mm. This is amazing. Yeah. 101 bottles and they were 250 pounds incredible absolutely I, incredible. I, put, I put two one for the bar and i've still got one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that's like a i don't know wedding day drama or yeah. funeral or something one of the two i maybe leave it for people to drink at my funeral oh god i'm not saying sad, sad but i know but no maybe my wedding, wedding. Yeah, maybe my wedding <laughs> yeah don't know what she's gonna come first well i had that <laughs> Well, I had the I had the last uh, drama of the album from here when Perk opened. Did. Yeah, you did. Opening day. If someone kept it aside for you. I think. Well, we pre-discussed it. Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a cracking drama. Yeah. But if, if nice. it ever crosses your path, you should try it. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's that's what I like about whiskey. Like you, it's like champagne. Like if you open a bottle of champagne or something, you you know you remember why you've done it. And, yeah, you know, certain drams yeah. have certain memories for me, and Altmore is. Yeah, definitely one in the bar in Perth mm -hmm. as well and stuff. So, no, special dram. Okay. Um, but, yeah, just before we go, guys, um, a wee birthday shout-out. Um, so, from Graham and Neil, um, I believe it's Ian's birthday. So, oh. happy birthday, Ian. He, they asked us slightly to embarrass you on here. So Happy birthday, Ian. We thought we'd happily encourage that. So, do, we, do, we know, do we know how old Ian is today? No, we don't. And I don't oh. know if I know Ian well enough to have a rude guess, but we'll say 75. <laughs> 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 doesn't look, the a, last one, doesn't look a day over 70. Doesn't matter, doesn't, this is the last one. Doesn't matter. Ian's been great in supporting the events, but he can't buy tickets anymore. So if I call him 75, <laughs> happy birthday, Ian. Happy Cheers. birthday, Ian. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> and um, yeah, just some thank yous, guys, really. Yeah. So thanks to Johnny for, for joining us. Um, thanks to Nicole at Perk for making the donuts. Mm -hmm. I think they'll agree they've been phenomenal. Thanks um, to you for getting the whiskey and getting us yeah, all organised. And and it's been amazing. No problem. Um, and yeah, the drivers as well. My dad helped me today doing all the deliveries and I remembered to give him a pack of donuts this week. I forgot last time. Oh, he is, um, he's only 55. He's 55. <laughs> he's, he's missed the seven on the keyboard. That's what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah thank you to you guys really for continuing to support this it's been a real sort of lifesaver for us um in the bar you know we've gone on and on and on about how rubbish it is for us but we won't bore you with that but genuinely you guys have really saved us saved us actually because it's been pretty crap um and yeah so we're, we're still here and we're going to be here in a couple of weeks um the tasting room upstairs um i think i talked about it last week where we're it's not going to be a tasting room as such anymore we're going to well, it is a tasting room, but it's mm -hmm. open so for sort of booking. So um, if you and your family want like a safe place to kind of drink and not be worrying about a busy bar environment, because I know just even myself looking out, you know, mm -hmm. there's some bars doing it really well and some bars I walk past and I think this is not the right idea. So um, we're going to open that up to booking. So yeah, get in touch with us if you want to come in. We're going to open up on Friday the 31st provisionally and then kind of full steam ahead from the first. So um, yeah, let us know if you, it'd be great to see you guys in here. I know. We've kind of built up quite a nice relationship with you guys over this, which we love. Um, mm. But there's nothing better than having a, a dram face to face. So, for sure. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to, to doing that in the future. But absolutely. Yeah. And thanks for joining us this whole time. Yeah. I mean, we have some folk who are with us tonight that have been with us like since the first tasting and has kind of come with us through this journey and got a bit drunk with us most of the time. Yeah, so, yeah. It's been a nice uh, distraction for everyone. Yeah, it's been yeah. amazing and it's a good release yeah. for us and and it's a bit of fun and we get to try flavors out and everything. So it's yeah. A big huge thanks for joining us and yeah. letting us could be part of this and letting us totally. kind of do but it's something yeah. you know it's been good fun um mm. sitting getting drunk and, and letting other people do the same so yeah absolutely yeah um but yeah any questions as always please let us know and if you have any favorites or things that you know whiskeys that should be stand out or or donuts that you think should be on yeah. the menu please let us know i love hearing feedback it's the best thing ever Great. great well thank you very much i'm going to yeah. call it a night there guys i think yeah. and i'll shut off the stream but oh, cheers one i more think time. my favorite whiskey tonight is japanese oh, yeah that. no i don't blame I'm you i don't blame you cheers guys thanks so much thank you <laughs>